how are today's businesses adapting to a world where quick, easy transactions are not just desired, but they're expected? Well, in today's episode of Tech Talks Daily, I welcome Sarah Jane Martin, Director of ICA Global AR Practice at Quadian Accounts Receivable. And she's going to shed light on the evolving B2B payment landscape. And as consumer payment processes like text to pay become more prevalent, we'll also talk about how traditional B2B payment methods are keeping up or falling short. And Sarah Jane will also discuss the challenges and opportunities of aligning B2B with B2C payment experiences, the role of AI and intelligent automation in this transition, and what all this means for businesses striving for efficiency and transparency in financial transactions. Delivering daily content to 140,000 of you wonderful monthly listeners across the globe is no small feat. I don't want to take all the credit here because it wouldn't be possible without the backing of our dedicated sponsors and partners. And I also want to shine a light on the fact that legacy managed file transfer tools are looking dated. They often lack the security that today's remote workforce demands. And companies that continue relying on that outdated tech, they're in danger of putting their sensitive data at risk. Attention IT professionals, are you tired of juggling these multiple servers for secure file sharing? Integrated shared folders and email plus a comprehensive REST API. KiteWorks simplifies your workflow. For administrators, you can experience unmatched functionality and integration that traditional MFT servers just can't touch. Step into the future of secure managed file transfer with KiteWorks by going to KiteWorks.com to get started. That's KiteWorks.com. And remember, KiteWorks is also FedRAMP moderate authorised. Thank you for your patience today. This is the moment you've been waiting for. It's time to welcome my guest onto the show. So buckle up and hold on tight as I beam your ears all the way to Chicago, where Sarah Jane is waiting to talk with us. So a massive warm welcome to the show, Sarah Jane. Can you tell everyone listening a little about who you are and what you do? Sure, thanks. So my name is Sarah Jane Martin. I am the Global Director of AR Practice at Quadient, working mostly in the accounts receivable space, supporting our sales team and also support leadership opportunities such as, such as this one. Fantastic. Well, there's so much I'm looking forward to talking with you about today because every single day on this podcast, I try and take a different area and talk about how it's being transformed by technology or how it's evolving. I mean, with the speed of AI change, for example, it feels like everything's evolving in real time at the moment. And one of the reasons I invited you on here was to talk about B2B payments. So Mm -hmm. just to set the scene, can you offer somewhat of an overview of the current B2B payment landscape and how you're seeing it evolving to meet the demands of modern businesses. I think you're right. I mean, the the state of B2B payments today is changing pretty rapidly, but we are still seeing, especially in the US, a lot of organizations are still relying on more traditional payment methods. So things like physical checks, which I know is not necessarily something you guys see in the UK But we're still seeing a lot of that over here, even though there are more digitalized methods available, right, such as like bank transfers. And I think a lot of companies are focusing on improving that experience for B2C payments, you know, offering things such as PayPal, Stripe. But where we're seeing, you know, that improvement in the B2C space, but not necessarily seeing that in in the B2B space. And I think, you know, there are a lot of tech- technological advances, you know, with mobile payments and artificial intelligence that are causing that B2B payment space to be forced into a, a sort of a digital shift. So that's kind of how I would set the scene today around the, the payment landscape. And there is a decade old saying now that the last best experience we have anywhere becomes the standard expectation for what we want everywhere. So all those B2C experiences we expect Mm -hmm. in B2B now. So how are B2B payment processes falling short compared to those B2C payment experiences you mentioned? And what are the main pain points businesses are facing in this area right now? I think what we're seeing is exactly what you've said, right? Uh, yeah. We're so used to that experience in our personal lives, and it's sort of becoming that expectation then in, in the business landscape as well. And I, I think some of that is driven by just the generational shift, right? I mean, we've got people now that are, are advancing in their careers that have 
never written a check or wouldn't even know what a check is. <laughs> so their whole sort of technological experience it based it in in that, and I think they're they're expecting that. Then when they're doing businesses for for B two B organizations, if they haven't sort of embraced that digital transformation, you often see sort of a, a lengthy payment process, right? So the the slow payment processing times, and that can often lead to delayed service offerings or cash flow management issues. And also can kind of strain the relationship that you would have with both your suppliers and your customers, you know, and I think in addition to that, you know, there's a, a lack of visibility into that payment journey. So tracking payments across multiple platforms obviously can be a logistical nightmare. And without that correct technology in place to get that view, it can it can lead to uncertainty and obviously even potential errors in financial reporting. And then finally, I think there's definitely a risk of default. So if you're not using technology that has some sort of AI to leverage, you know, automatic payment updates or reminders that go out to your customers and your suppliers, then I think that can, you know, definitely present a risk of default. So, you know, it's definitely prohibiting organizations from ensuring secure and timely transactions, which would replicate that B2C style that we're more so commonly used to. 100% 100% with you on that. And of course, text to pay and so many mm. other seamless payment methods have become popular in the B2C space. Younger audiences even use the name Venmo as a verb. I mean, the, the mm. line, I'll venue you for food, for example, is commonplace. You can hear it everywhere. And how can B2B organizations adapt similar methods to improve that payment process and, and make it as seamless? Yeah, so I, I think... Businesses have to consider digitally transform- transforming their finance function, yeah. obviously, if they want to achieve that B2C like payment experience. You know, it's, it's not enough anymore to just send you know, emails or have an online portal, although that is still fairly common. But I, I think that even that feels a little bit antiquated at this point. So I think we need to look at how sort of AI driven solutions and intelligent automation can really improve that payment experience. And they're pretty essential, really, if we want to consider replicating the B2C experience. And we have gone, what, 10 minutes without even talking about AI properly, and that's kind of broken a few laws in the world of tech podcasts. So what role do you <laughs> see things, What role do you see things like AI and intelligent automation playing in transforming that finance function of B2B organizations? There's a lot of sellers out there saying that they, they've got the answer, especially in accounts receivable, et cetera. But what mm-hmm. are you seeing here? So, I mean, I think one of the main things about AI that really is important to note, right, is that it it, it really removes a lot of the, the risk associated with traditionally sort of manual processes. And, and certainly in AR, there's always a ton of manual data entry, which obviously inherently can lead to risk, right, of mistakes being made or somebody fat fingering something. So, we definitely see it there and and also the ability just to improve sort of speed and accuracy by leveraging AI. I think it also plays a huge part in being able to help analyze huge sets of data. You know, historically that was probably done by a business analyst. It would require multiple sort of reports being pulled from various sources. And again, that can obviously have some inherent risk involved. And then, you know, by the time you've been able to identify any insights or trends or patterns in that data, it, it's old at that point, right? Because it's taken so long. So when you're leveraging AI, you're getting that immediate sort of insight into what's going on. And it's constantly changing as the, as the, data, as the data changes. So I think right there, we can see the value of AI. We've definitely seen that in the accounts receivable space, just with sort of identifying which customers are most likely to not pay on time or which customers, you know, respond to an email or which customers are using a credit card. And just having that sort of data available and in real time and constantly improving is really where we're seeing the benefits of AI within the B2B space, particularly in, of course, accounts receivable, what I'm familiar with, but I would imagine across all finance functions, just having the ability to analyze huge data sets and identify patterns quickly really can improve that sort of speed and accuracy 
and obviously just r- uh, mitigate risk in, in that in that environment. And I suspect we will have a lot of business leaders listening within this industry that know they need to change, know they need to get better. But knowing where to start or avoid making unnecessary mistakes, that's where things get a little bit tricky. So just to Mm -hmm. bring to life what we're talking about here, do you have any specific examples or maybe case studies where a business has successfully transitioned from traditional B2B payment options to something more streamlined like those B2C experiences that we're talking about? So I do have one example of a, of a publicly referenceable case study <laughs> that yeah. I was able to, to pull. You know, we have uh, a customer, a company called Core Review, who was uh, still receiving a lot of their payments via paper check. And it was really kind of slowing down, you know, their cash flow. You know, fr- fraud risk obviously is inherent with any kind of paper payment process like that. And they opted to leverage a service that we offer at Claudian AR is called the digital optimization service. And it's essentially where we leverage our solution to identify customers that are paying via check. So anytime a a customer pays via check and that's identified within their core system, our solution then will trigger a series of email campaigns to that customer, essentially outlining the benefits of paying electronically you know, providing the link so that the customer can click in and, and pay that pay that invoice via portal. They then have the ability to set up auto payment. So you know, can just select sort of, hey, when my invoice is due, you know, just charge this credit card or charge this bank account or direct debit, obviously, in, in the UK. And what they saw from that was massive improvement. So not only were they able to reduce the number of paper checks they were receiving by about 50%, they also reduced their DSO by nine days. So it really did sort of highlight the fact that when people send a check, it just takes so long. So they were able to reduce their DSO. Obviously, then without having those paper checks coming into an office or into a bank account where they then had to be manually keyed, it kind of reduced that manual process on their employees and then reduced their workflow, obviously, and probably their work experience as well. And then, of course, their customers were happy, right? Because that that seamless experience was provided to them. They had flexibility, they had self-service options. So although that may not replicate a B to C experience entirely, you can kind of see just the shift between that paper check sort of activity now it being moved into an electronic activity really did improve that company in multiple ways. And I think from here, we can assume that then more improvements will likely have the same effect. And another area that I often hear talked about is the lack of visibility in the payment landscape, especially Mm -hmm. in B2B transactions. I mean, how can organizations improve transparency? Should they? I mean, what benefits would that bring? Yeah, I mean, absolutely. When we, a lot of times when we'll talk to a prospective client, it's, it's unbelievable to me the number of organizations, even large organizations, like people you wouldn't expect, are still doing things very manually. Yeah. We hear a lot of times like, you know, spreadsheets are being used to track things. We've got, you know, data in different systems that it's hard to sort of bring together in a cohesive sort of view of what's going on. And it is really hard for those companies and to and they're obviously the, the folks that work in the accounts receivable department to really understand what's going on with their customers and, and really understand where the risk is. And that can be a huge problem, right? Especially when it comes to things like audits, you know, or anything like that, where they could actually be at financial risk, they just don't even have insight into that. So, so, you know, being able to leverage that can really help in terms of improving transparency. So as businesses look to digitally transform their payment processes, maybe remove some of those manual processes as well, are are there any key considerations that they should be keeping in mind just to ensure a successful transition and and avoid some of those mistakes that they may have seen others make? Yeah, I mean, I, I think it's always important to kind of ease into change, especially when it's sort of an established pattern that you already have with your customers. So you know, I think it's kind of important that you still sort of offer the sort of old school options yeah. and kind of bring in those those newer options kind of slowly. You know, obviously monitor that to see, you know, are your customers adopting that? Are there things that, that we could do better? You know, so, so I would say just don't sort of flip the light switch, right? And yeah. say, okay, we're no longer doing this, we're going to do that. 
And I think obviously, again, we can highlight here that the use of AI would give you some insights into that sort of adoption rate, right? You can kind of see, you know, as I mentioned in that case study, we were able to see that 50% reduction. So they were able to see immediately that, you know, by making that shift, a lot of their customers had adopted that and were happy with it. So they knew they could continue down that path. So I, I would just say, you know, really weigh your options in terms of what you want to offer your customers and then kind of have a little bit of a lead time to let people adjust and understand the benefits and then sort of slowly, slowly phase out those older, more traditional methods. And as we said at the very beginning of our conversation, the role of tech's impact in the this and, and causing everything to evolve is happening in real time. And looking mm-hmm. to the future, though, what trends or innovations are you, do you see in this landscape and how do you see it further shaping how businesses handle transactions and accounts receivable. I appreciate I'm asking you to look in a virtual crystal ball here, but are you getting any <laughs> hints of how it's unfolding? So it's interesting because I, I really do feel like the sky is the limit. I think yeah. I think there are going to be changes that we, we don't even consider today and in the very near future. One of the things that I kind of have an inkling will probably happen is I think we'll start to leverage artificial intelligence to really do a lot of the transactional work. So I, I, I kind and I'm just, you know, spitballing here, but I think yeah. what we'll see is organizations, you know, an, an invoice will be issued to a, to another system and then there will be into artificial intelligence that will communicate back, back and forth. Right. So a lot of the, the sort of functionality that we do today as a person you know, perhaps that invoice gets received and there's something wrong with it. And I, I really believe that AI will be able to identify that, send a communication back and say, hey, I'm not sure what this line item is. And I, I really believe there will be conversation between, you know, different systems via AI to resolve invoice payment. Like, I think the whole process is going to end up being automated, like everything from sort of the initial invoice delivery, dispute management, you know, Maybe they, the you know the the receiver said, "Hey, I, I need a PO on this." And it'll go back. You know, I I really think that process is going to end up being fully automated, and we're gonna we're gonna see a real jump. I think that's kind of the next step. Like we've got the AI in place now to do a lot of those things, but there's still this sort of manual function involved when there's exceptions. And I think what we're going to see is a lot of that become automated through intelligent AI. Well, thank you so much for sharing your insights on everything that you're seeing in the business to business payment landscape. But on behalf of other business leaders listening that might be struggling with that pressure of being in a state of continuous <laughs> learning, I've got to ask, where or how do you self-educate? How do you keep up to speed with everything? From a from a business perspective, I attend a lot of conferences, obviously speak at a lot of them, attend a lot of the sessions when I'm there. I stay up to date on my reading. So always sort of looking on LinkedIn and reading other uh, other you know, companies' articles on where things are going and what they're seeing. I think that's really important to just kind of stay ahead of the trends. You know, but that's really my core source. And that also just learning from people that I talk to, right? Whether that's a prospective customer and, and the challenges that they're facing and then kind of understanding how we can solve those challenges and, and nine times out of 10, you know, they're looking to automate that. So sort of tying those two things together, like what I'm hearing out in the marketplace, what people are saying, what other organizations are are saying, and then, of course, what, you know, what our customers and our prospective customers are saying and kind of pulling all that information together and, and kind of looking to the future through through that base of information. Love that. Fantastic advice for everybody listening as well and for where, I've got to ask, where is the best place for listeners to find you or your team online? Maybe find out more about anything we talked about today. Is there any way you'd like to point everyone? So certainly my LinkedIn profile, yeah. if you're looking for anything specific to me, obviously post a lot of articles uh, on LinkedIn or share articles. And then from a quite an AR perspective, our website, which is ar.audient.com, if they're interested in taking a look at a deeper dive of our solution. Awesome. Well, I'll add links to everything so people can find you nice and easily. And we covered so much in a short amount of time there from discussing the shifting B2B payment landscape as organisations around the world look to adapt this more seamless payment experiences, aligning to closer B2C payment processes like text to pay, for example, 
but also how organizations can facilitate that transition from B2B to B2C and exploring things like AI, intelligent automation, but some golden advice hidden in their conversation is you don't have to go all in and just flick that switch straight away. In fact, that's probably the worst thing you could do. So thank you so much for sharing your invaluable advice today. Really appreciate it. Absolutely. Thanks so much for having me on, Neil. After our discussion now, it's really got me thinking about the future of B2B payments and how companies can harness technology to better streamline their financial operations. And as we navigate this digital transformation of finance, what steps can your organisation take to enhance your payment processes? Think about how these changes might impact your business and also feel free to share your thoughts with me by emailing me techblogwriteroutlook.com or Twitter, LinkedIn, Instagram, just at Neil C. Hughes. I hope you learned as much from Sarah Jane and her wealth of insights today as I did. And I hope it sparks further conversations amongst everyone listening and wherever you are in the world, in your workplace. And again, what part of today's discussion as a whole resonated with you most? Share your views, join the conversation, and we will continue exploring how technology is reshaping our business landscapes together. But that's it for today. So thank you for listening as always. And until next time, don't be a stranger. Stranger.